forgive us all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Dear one, our Lord Jesus Christ, say, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes, and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Remaining seated, let's say responsibly together, Psalm 32 found in your bulletin. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no God. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, 
and did not conceal my guilt. I have said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and then he forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule, which has no understanding, who must be fitted with a bit of bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad and be righteous and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy all who are true of heart. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. From now on, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we no longer know, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In this instance, you may be seated. 
because it's a long lesson. <laughs> and I want you to hear it. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. The Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, and he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Oh, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe best one, and put it on him, put a ring on his finger, and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead, and is alive again, he was lost, and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now, the elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatty calf because he has got him back safe and sound. <coughs> then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen. All these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you kill the fatted calf for him? Then the father said, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Responses to this parable, it seems to me. One is, oh, what a beautiful parable. 
What a lovely parable. So much, God has so much love. Now let's, uh, let's do a little uh, cross-stitching on that and put it on a pillow. <laughs> The other response is, this really ticks me off. <laughs> and you know, if you don't have at least a little bit of the second response, I'm not sure you're listening. This should annoy you. My goodness. Who's responsible here? <laughs> Nobody? Nobody's going to raise their hands? <laughs> no, no. Who, I mean, who among you is responsible? Who are the, who's the responsible ones here? Yeah, there we go. Got one honest person here. They're, they're responsible. Wanda, you're responsible. Absolutely. This son of yours comes back. God's just not fair. God is not fair. Because the unmerciful older brother is unmerciful because he's resentful. But if you're a younger son that has made a mess, you want mercy. You want unreasonable mercy. And if you love someone who needs mercy, you want you want God to be incredibly unfair. So, it really matters about who you are, what you've done, where you've been, how you stand in relation to other people, how you're feeling that day. Maybe if the younger, if the older brother uh, had, a, had a better attitude, he might have just said, yes, join the party. You know, that's my old illustration about 575, about the interstate highway system. You know? <laughs> you know? If I'm feeling good, they can cut me off all day long, and I don't mind. But if I'm not feeling so good, the slightest little. Can you just back off? <laughs> as if they can hear you. <laughs> so it's not God's unfairness that we're talking about here. We're talking about our unfairness. Our unevenness in the world. I mean, God is, is entirely fair. But we are the ones. We are the ones who are not fair to each other. And I don't need to fill in the blanks for you. It's all over the place. Our unfairness, our resentment, the way it is. The question for us, and I think the question that this difficult parable offers to us is what are we going to do about it? How are we going to respond to this? Well, it seems to me like there's two ends of the, of the, of the spectrum here. One, we could be Niccolo Machiavelli. Remember him? You know, philosophy? He decided, uh, you know, you know, we can, virtue. What's that? It's an unfair world, so use unfair means. Everything's justified by the ends. Everything. So, this is where our nihilism comes in. This is where our our, our skepticism comes in. This is where we are. The preeminent cynic. Then we can, we can live in that kind of a framework and be a completely miserable and make everyone around us miserable. Because this is all about family systems. It spreads out. It engenders. I'm 
not going to get into a political discussion because I try to avoid those things, but you know what I'm talking about here. The way we talk to each other. The way we talk to each other is just making it worse. The other end of the spectrum is what Paul calls the more excellent way. Crazy. It's all about love. It's all about what I would call leaning into the world. Leaning into the world with the life of man. Leaning into a world of, of selfishness and self-centeredness in a life lived in love. And possibly, possibly making a difference in the world. There's no guarantee. And somebody once told me about it. You know, there's no guarantee that being, being virtuous uh, is going to, to make the world virtuous. Being unselfish and, not, and unresentful is not going to make the world uh, self, unselfish and unresentful. There's no guarantee about that. But if you're selfish and resentful, and you spread, you're pretty much guaranteed that you're going to spread that around. That people are going to going to latch onto that. This is one of the things that uh, that struck me uh, in, in my unscientific poll of uh, of asking people around. You know, what brings you joy? One of the most difficult questions that I, that I've found people have a hard time answering. What brings you joy? Not just happiness, but what lifts you up? What, when you think about it in the morning, lifts you out of your bed and makes you walk with a grin and a smile and grace so that uh, when they do cut you off on the interstate highway system, you just want to bless them? <laughs> what brings you joy? Very difficult question. But you know, if I ask him what irritates you, boy, we can come up with a whole list of this stuff. So where do we want to live? So the older brother is standing at the threshold, whether he's going to go into the party or whether he's going to stay out in the cold. And it's hard because the world is full of rotten young brothers. <laughs> because we have been rotten younger brothers. And we know what that looks like. The problem with staying on this side is it corrupts the soul. It turns us into victims. We blame everyone around us for what's wrong with us or the world, and it becomes an issue of the pointing of the finger. I love that phrase from the Bible. The pointing of the finger. Deliver me, O oh Lord, from the pointing of the finger. Paul, and, and, I, and I encourage you, I encourage you to, uh, to take home and read this passage from 2 Corinthians. Because I think it's one of the most important passages that Paul has ever, ever wrote. This idea that I no longer look at you as a human being. I look at you as Christ. I look at you, I look at you from the perspective of not of my unfairness, but from the incredible love of the living God that sees so deep into each one of us and embraces each one of us no matter where we've been or what we've done or how we've gotten there. This unfair God, thanks be no longer consider the world in this way. And because of that, I am a new creation. Paul uses this incredible term to be in Christ. And he uses this a lot in his letters. What does that mean, to be in Christ? You know, like as if you could be in 
inside of another human being. Okay? One way that I remember it is uh, back in seminary, I had a wonderful professor um, who uh, would celebrate the Holy Eucharist, a very high church uh, fellow. And, um, and uh, we were in the, the sacristy, uh, he was vesting, and, uh, and he was putting on this thing that I'm wearing right now. It's called a chasuble. I was just throwing you this chasuble stole, all this stuff. And he said, uh, you know, Jamie, this is, this is what it looks like to put on the personality of Jesus Christ. You see, I'm not wearing this for me, even though I look marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't belong to me. I'm not up here in a fancy Armani suit that I managed uh, uh, to, to acquire through some kind of nefarious means, I guess. But I'm here wearing, this is yours. I'm wearing this for you so that we all might be clothed in the personality of Jesus Christ. To be enveloped by his love. And in some cases, to be shaped by the mantle of Christ. To live into it. To allow it to come, to, to allow ourselves to be shaped and formed by it rather than the other way around. So that we can, when we look around the world, we can be, as, Christ, as Paul says, ambassadors in the world. Where we can lean into this crazy, crazy world full of people who are being so impolite and so mean and cruel and vicious and bloodthirsty. We can lean into this world with the personality of Jesus Christ, lean into it with the love of God and make a difference. Maybe just a little one here or maybe just a big one here. Doing what we can with what we have, with what God has given us and the power of love which has come from God to move the world from where it shouldn't be to where it should be by the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen.
this holy season, let us turn to God in prayer, saying, Lord, in your mercy, for all preparing for holy baptism and for all the people of God, that we might embrace the folly of the cross and become ministers of reconciliations in our broken world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our for this nation and for all nations, that we may generously share the produce of the land, both in plenty and in want. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our for the alienated and the rejected of the world, that all may come to know God's welcome to sit at the table. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our for all our communities, that we may learn from God to seek the lost and to rejoice when they are found. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our for our own needs and for the needs of others, that God may be gracious to us in our needs, remembering especially Trish, Ted, Dale, Sharon, Fred, John T., Margaret C., Marge, Jerry, Larry, Mary Elizabeth, Walton, Jan B., Shanta, Howard, Randall, Karen, Deborah, John D., Scott, Laura, Marty, Sarah, Fran, Madison, Zane, Van, Don, Michaela, George, Jean, Dakota, Barbara M., Jacob, and Deacon Judith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who serve in the armed forces and for their families, for their service and sacrifice. Remembering especially Gavin, Marnus, Jerry, Justin, Ethan, Nick, Joyce, David, Brandon, Maggie, Stephen, Jacob, Jake, Rose, and Derek. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who celebrate birthdays, remembering especially Delena Mabry, Eddie Hobby, Sally Macknick, Cliff Morrison, and Randall Davis, and for those who celebrate their wedding anniversaries. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. I invite your prayers aloud or silently. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, bring us all back to you when we stray. And give us again the joy of proclaiming in our families, communities, and all the lives we touch your saving grace. Amen. Amen. Please stand, my brothers and sisters. The peace of the
the Lord be always with you.
So um, just reach out to me if you have any questions, but you'll see more about it in the newsletter. Thank you. Hey, you forgot to mention there's oh. still fish over there. Yes, four bags left. Four bags of fish, five dollars a piece. We already have sixty-five dollars today. You can add to the fish. Brian has awesome. been sold. <laughs> um, the other reason thing up is the best we had a meeting last week, and for those that are interested in the parking lot, we approved um, spending money to have the parking lot fixed, not redone. Okay, they're going to come in, fill the holes reseal it, and remark it. And that will give us several years to figure out what we want to do with the parking lot. And uh, what it's going to cost and everything else. So we did a, to get approval to repair the parking lot since that seemed to be something important that the parishioners wanted done. Okay, so we are in the process of getting that scheduled in. And so you may see some work going on. I'll be selling the fish over on the other side. We've got a few left, so you can get them while they're still available. Thank you. Uh, Corey's not here. Uh, I'll, right. I'll, I'll make a note. Uh, let me. Corey is is doing this uh, this Native American. Well, it's it's on the Trail of Tears, and he's been doing it for the last couple of weeks. Um, and uh, since we're having a combined service, it's going to be the week following that he's going to be picking up on this. He has an incredible encyclopedic knowledge of, uh, of this. He's been interested in First Nation stuff for a long, long time. Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of places right here in this county, uh, my goodness, around the corner. Uh, I talked about the, the Walmart on, uh, uh, where on uh, Riverstone. Uh, that, there, was a, there was an Indian village there. Native American village. Um, next week, uh, next Saturday, uh, we're going to take a group or we're going to meet up at the Punk Heritage Center. Uh, it, in, um, Waleska. You know, I was thinking of the college. Uh, Reinhardt right. College in Waleska. Um, Punk Heritage Center is, is, a, is, a, is about Native Americans and it has, it has this huge stone that was picked up um, and has petrographs on it, uh, markings uh, over it. Um, so uh, sign up for that. Uh, uh, after Easter, we're going to take a road trip up to Chief Fan's house, which is in Chatham, and down the road from that is New Echota, which is where the uh, where the capital of uh, at one point of the of the, uh, uh, of the Cherokee was. So uh, that's what's coming up there. Another piece, one final piece. A lot of announcements today. Um, uh, we're back. We're gearing up, you know. Um, the bishop has lifted the, uh, the, the restriction on the common cup. So that today, um, if you wish to uh, receive from the common cup, um, uh, we will have a, a Eucharistic minister standing here. And if you wish to continue to, to receive by intinction, uh, we'll have a Eucharistic minister standing here. And I will be intincting on lines that will form here, and I will. Uh, we will have the common cup available on lines coming here. It worked pretty good at the nine o'clock, uh, and we'll see uh, um, how it works at the eleven o'clock. Um, anything else? What's birthdays? Birthdays. <laughs> Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for the life of this your servant. May she continue to grow in grace from moment to moment. She is, she is perfectly formed.
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice.
opened in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by thy word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink ye all of this for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, <coughs> we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, 
we and all my whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. <coughs> and here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By him and with him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. sacrificed for us.
and it is um, um, beautiful. Yeah, of course it's beautiful. Um, uh, there's a wideness in God's mercy, which is an old hymn, uh, but it has a lot of different tunes to it. And this is a tune uh, written by a man named Calvin Hampton, and uh, it, it brings brings to bear how much a tune can make a difference in a hymn. And what Calvin Hampton managed to do with, with, this, with this hymn, as opposed to the, the old uh, tune that we're probably more familiar with, there's a wide mercy. This has a bit more soaring qualities to it. And what I think it does with, this, with the words of this hymn, it really enunciates um, those critical phrases uh, that this hymn tries to bring across. And to do, as I try to do each Sunday, to find hymns that will uh, have your toe tapping as you go out into the parking lot. And, um, and, and by music, be able to, um, to, to um, inwardly digest what the gospel message is uh, for today and bring it into the world in that way. So with that sort of introduction, uh, and uh, realizing that it's, 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 it's a little bit more complicated than your ordinary uh, hymn. Uh, please enter into it uh, as enthusiastically as you can. And uh, if, uh, if, if you don't, just listen to it. Because it is beautiful. Hit it. <laughs>
of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.